They say an unreflected experience is a wasted experience. So that's why we reflect on our art and we annotate our artworks during a studio process. This helps you to develop new ideas. It helps you to reflect on some of the errors, but also consider new possibilities. Where can I take this artwork? What's working well? And what's maybe requiring a bit of improvement? So when we reflect on our artworks, I encourage you to use the what, how, why process. The first thing we reflect on is what. What is in the image? For example, we can look at this artwork by Van Gogh, very famous one, Starry Night. If we analyze what is in the image, we're analyzing the subject matter. So the subject matter in this picture are stars, I think I can count them. There's 11 or 12 of them. There is a big steeple. There is a big tree. Looks like a poplar tree to me. It's a nighttime scene. I want you to do the same when you write about your own artwork. Tell me, what is the subject matter in the picture and why have you chosen that subject matter? The next thing is how. How did you create your image? The things I want you to talk about are your use of materials and your development of new techniques. Let's look at Van Gogh again. We can see that he's used very thick paint. It's highly saturated, meaning there's lots of colour. And we can see that there's a real suggestion of movement. The paint is so thick, it's possible that he's not just using a paintbrush, but he's using a palette knife or even his fingers to apply some of this paint. This is his intentional development of a new technique, an innovative technique of the time with highly saturated colors and thick oil paint. So we've done the what, we've done the how, the final one is why. This might be the most difficult one, but it's the most important one in your art analysis. How do the art elements and art principles of this painting create aesthetic qualities? Now the art elements can be considered the ingredients in the painting. They include things like line, shape, color, texture, tone, value, which can also be called form. These are like the eggs, the flour, the butter, the ingredients that go together to make a cake. The art principles are like the recipe of the cake. It's how you apply these ingredients to try communicate an aesthetic quality. So that could include things like pattern, contrast, emphasis, balance, proportion, scale, harmony, rhythm, or movement. And finally, the aesthetic qualities are the visual qualities of your artwork. The feeling that you are trying to create visually when you create the artwork. If we were to analyze Van Gogh, we might, for example, focus on line. In the sky, he's created almost the suggestion of curvilinear, organic line work. And this creates a sense of rhythm and movement. That's our art principle. And what this suggests is almost this momentous aesthetic quality of awe and grandeur. This is the mood, the feeling that Van Gogh is trying to create in this artwork. And we can see that there's this vast space of the sky that overpowers the distant buildings that look tiny on the horizon. This creates a lonely and isolated aesthetic quality. We can see that his sense of space and use of scale, which is the art principle, can actually make the people, the village, look very distant, very far away from us as the viewer. So in the same way, I want you to look at your own artwork and I want you to consider what, how, and why. What is the subject matter? How did you develop materials and techniques? And why? What is the aesthetic quality 
the mood and feeling that you want to create by making this artwork. Thank you.